all, Ben here, East West. What an incredible week. Uh, it's certainly taken me by surprise, uh, and it's led me to a, a few trains of thoughts. Uh, but first off, I should just address the fact that I have been saying for quite some time that I could not see the market making new all-time highs this year. I thought it was it would happen, but I didn't think it would happen this quickly. So to start off, I will dedicate a song to myself. Yes, this week I've been eating some big slices of humble pie. It certainly it's caught me out. I, I really didn't think that it could do this, uh, but in hindsight, maybe I should have known. Uh, however, yes, I, I am eating humble pie. It's one of my favourite dishes. Now, I think we all understood that we were sitting on top of a powder keg. We just needed a, a spark to ignite, and I just didn't think that that spark would come as quickly as it did. But there seems to have been a very sudden shift uh, in realisation that nuclear is going to be essential uh, to run the next wave of AI. Uh, that seems to have been a transition that has taken place in the space of a week or two. So it has happened very quickly and a lot quicker than what I thought. So how do we play the market from this point? Well, to start off with, I'm just going to introduce a quick analogy that I'm going to be referring to in the analysis further on, uh, the boxer analogy. When a boxer trains for a fight, they don't train to knock the other man out. They don't train to win. They train their bodies to be able to absorb punishment because being able to absorb more punishment than your opponent is how you win in boxing. And the same can be said for trading. It's not a physical thing, but you do have to prepare your mind to take punishment. You have to be able to strengthen your mind to withstand the FUD, the fear, the uncertainty, and the doubt that comes with any trade that you do. Now, as the old saying goes, you expect the best, but you prepare for the worst. And it'd be lovely if every trade we, were, we did worked out like this. Never offside, no retracements, one punch knockout, bang. But you cannot go into any trade or investment expecting that. You have to go into every trade and investment expecting that it's going to go like this. And this is why preparing yourself mentally to take this punishment that the market may or may not dish out, but you are ready for it if it does. And when you go through any major drawdown or correction in the market, when you've got a position that is underwater, this is how you will feel. Uranium is volatile, and during the last correction that we've just come out of, uh, this is exactly what it would have felt like, okay? But you've got to withstand that pressure, and the reason is so that you're ready. So that when the time's right, as it's just become, you are ready. After the pain comes the gain, and you'll be well-placed to enjoy those well-earned gains in the market. So the boxer analogy, prepare for the pain. With that being said, let's just jump in and have a look where we are. Okay, let's start with SMR. Uh, incredible run, of course, this week, as everything has had. I just see here there's one new story where Craig... Uh, Hallam or Craig, as you people call say, Craig Hallam raised the price um, to twenty-one dollars. So obviously we're, we're just about there. Um, we'll just keep an eye on that. Well, I'm not going to put too much weight into that. I think what's important here is if you just look at, you know, obviously incredible run, but I'm just looking now at these candles. You can see we've got two big wicks that have kind of rejected the top. Now, in some ways, that makes sense to me. So let's just zoom in really quickly and have a look. So we've just, this is where we exploded upwards from, right? So this was just where we were mining our own business. And then, of course, the start on Wednesday when the news dropped, bang. So I am just looking at, you know, these are the session uh, volume profiles, okay? So this is like the, the all the volume profile for, for the day of Wednesday. Uh, the yellow is the point of control, which is the highest value point. Uh, so look, this is, a, this is just a volume hole. There's nothing transacted through here, okay? The market went straight up to here. Now, it makes some sense to me that the market would start to bog down. Um, well, I'll show you why in a little minute. But the, the first thing I'd look at is, you know, what makes sense to me in a lot of ways is um, the psychological $20 area, okay? So to me, it is, it's just a round number. It doesn't, it, it sounds silly, but that, that's kind of where people might think, oh, I'll sell it 20 bucks. You know, I'm long from $13.50, 20 bucks, round number. Psychologically, it's just, 
it's easier for the mind to digest. So what I'm saying is that the the um yeah we had an attempt here, okay, where we opened on Friday, and the buyers attempted to push it higher, but um you know look the sellers found difficulty uh had difficulty finding buyers to interact with here above 20 bucks and so the price dropped back down and we then we just started to churn so you know it th there is a little bit of resistance up here okay so let me just clear this it's short term but that is just where the market looks like it, it's it's got to get through okay it, we need to find willing buyers above here now i also did see this story that um robert k temple shareholder sold 127,000 shares whether or not that helped to bog down the price a little bit because there was a little bit there to, to soak up i don't know um but if that's done dusted now away uh well happy days that removes a little bit of supply so we are quite warm obviously with the rsi here uh the same boxer analogy applies as it will to everything if you want to get in here and look i, I don't doubt the the potential for tremendous further upside but mentally prepare yourself for the trip back down so if it does happen you, you've trained for it you're ready for it you can take that suffer you can suffer and get through it and then enjoy what we all hope will be future uh stellar moves uh so i don't know look like i said you could get a first round knockout and this never puts you under pressure and it just keeps going you know ad nauseum so we will see but like i said i just think it's a good idea to mentally prepare if you're long just mentally prepare yourself and train yourself for that to happen so that you can withstand anything like that. In fact, if that did happen, that would be tremendous. That looks like a great area to buy. Uh, okay, LO, it should be OMG, I reckon. This has been an incredible, incredible week. Since uh, Uranium Charts and I looked at this last week, we're basically up 130%. That's, that's an incredible move. We always take Fridays with a grain of salt because, you know, it does make sense that even though we had this incredible push up, you know the market you can just see now it's just beginning to find some um some sort of wicks up here if i can grab my tool it's just grabbing some wicks up here uh once again just above that psychological 20 dollar mark okay it does make sense oh, i'm a seller at 20 bucks that that does make some sense now this is only an hour it's very very short term and this is just starting to diverge which just tells you that the market is just starting to run out of gas a little bit in terms of the strength of the up candles versus the strength of the down candles and then of course to close out the week we had just a little bit of selling here on the close so same thing that we, we, we see the same phenomenon right so all this this is just a volume a non-volume rip until we got to the top and digested this is just a little bit more digestion but the points of control were higher up in the range and the same things happened here but you can just see how we've just I wouldn't say we've teardropped away but we have just come back from these highs okay which is not unexpected i mean incredible week so we have just come back 50 percent uh, of the opening rip all right so um yeah obviously we have to see what happens on monday but i, I think it goes without saying just you know volume wise that you know are we going to see our first point of uh, support sixteen dollars thirty uh down to fifteen dollars sort of sixty area that would be the first point of call but be aware that if we did uh, get through that you know there, there is no market acceptance through here we could be headed a little bit lower and that is only a correction that's not a crash but i would just caution the same thing okay you've got to realize that we are very very hot we have run very very quickly there is no doubt there's tremendous potential upside here no doubt about it the boxer analogy train yourself to withstand this so if it does happen that's still a big if if that does happen you're not puking out at the wrong time in fact, you know, the best way to do it would be to try to buy it. I mean, that would be unbelievable. Technically, that would be an unbelievable place for the market to retrace and touch before uh, we can expect further upside. That, that, that'd that be how I'd read it. And then at that point, you know, we would have established um, a new trend, except that would not be red. That would be green because it's a bullish trend. So look, this looks great. Um, like I said, a little bit of struggling up here just to finish off the week, which is not unexpected. Just be prepared for this. ASPI, right? Another one that um, my man, the Red Devil, has been covering. Uranium Charts has been covering as well. Another one that's had a tremendous run. Okay, so some some interesting technical things going on here. Uh, so we, we do have to observe this candle, right? So we did have a weak rejection at the top, but it's being Friday. It's an, been an incredible week. It's not unexpected, okay? The other thing that's sort of happening here, um, you know, we didn't quite get to $5, but... Uh, pardon me, I should just move that up actually to $5, but that... 
I would expect that is going to be. It's it, it sounds crazy, but it just happens. Like psychologically, people just like these sort of round numbers in their trading. They just think five bucks, man. I'll, I'll take it. You know, I'm long from. Uh, yeah, I might I might be long from down here. Two dollars fifty, three dollars. You know, that that's a great get in a very short space of time. So what's kind of interesting here is you know we've got this trend channel. Um, th this is the best one I could sort of fashion that had the most sort of uh, touches. You know, in terms of tops and bottoms. This framed the market pretty well until we exploded above it. But what's kind of interesting here is you could clone this and stick it on top. <laughs> the market sort of just wicked straight to that and stopped stopped again. Uh, so a little bit of crayon drawing there. Maybe you take a little bit of a liberty. But um, here's what I'm seeing in terms of the progression of price. Here's the base, right? So, you know, we, we had qu quite a bit of churning down here. We held, we held, all of a sudden we broke. So initially we had this resistance area, okay? We broke above that, and then what's happened? We've held it multiple times. We've tested it multiple times, and then we've broken through the top because we've had we had a little bit of a, a a double top here, and up we go. So for me, it goes without saying that this would be the next point where you'd be interested because these were the old resistance points for any sort of correction, if indeed one even comes, because the same thing applies. We could just keep going like that next week. There is no doubt about it. Uh, but if we were going to correct, is this the sort of area we'd be interested in? Well, personally, I would. Uh, I don't know about you, but you know, to me, this sort of three dollars thirty area that looks um, that would look very, very tasty to me. Especially if it, uh, you know, I I wouldn't be shocked. I'm definitely not predicting that this is what's going to happen. I wouldn't be shocked if you saw a very quick rip back. Okay, as fast money, you know sees that the market's running out of gas, goes, you know what, bugger it. I'm just going to take the money and run. I'm going to stick it in something else. Um, I'm going to try to grab onto some silver miners or something because silver's had an incredible uh, day slash week. Uh, and this just drops on oh, not much volume before, you know, more seasoned or patient investors waiting for the pullback uh, lurk. So I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but I I'm just thinking what I do is I just look at this chart and think, what would I love to happen? I would love this. This would be great, okay? At that point, I, I'd be very, very interested in getting long for the, tr the undoubted tremendous potential that this has got to go even higher. Energy fuels. Been a long wait for a lot of people on this one, uh, but we've finally broken through this trend channel, uh, this downtrend channel that um, I've, I've, I've had on my chart for a while, and it's pretty definitive, so just here on the weekly, the last box I want to tick is to see price close above that cloud. It, to me, it's always a, it's a big sign when price can close above the weekly cloud. It's not a guarantee, as we saw here, uh, but it, it's a good sign. What it means is that enough time has gone by uh, for price to move and digest this sell-off and move back through the cloud. To me, that generally signals that we're on our way back up. So that's a great sign. We'll just wait for that. Hopefully we get it next week. And once again, you can just see some of the wicks coming in here at the top. And look, I think you, you probably, you're probably within your rights to, to come in here, Elliot style and say one, two, three, four, and then we're coming up here for a fifth. Um, you know, that doesn't look un, un, unreasonable. We're not, um, we're not seeing any divergence here just yet which means that you know this might push a little bit further uh, but subscribe to Elliot one of the ways that you can pinpoint the potential top of the impulse is um, if you put the 61.8 on the bottom of four and extend a fifth wave which we have here uh, you would think that that looks you know not like like not a bad place to put in a top and when I say top I mean a short-term top uh, also you know this is all sort of lining up around that psychological well i don't know if $7 is psychological but it is a round number uh, but but we do have a lot of tops here so this makes sense that this might pause here or it could just go on an orgy of un, un, uninterrupted just buying spree forever yeah you know, <laughs> we've seen it right that's that's not impossible that that happens i mean i i didn't think that it was possible well i i didn't think it was impossible i thought it wasn't likely but it, it's so it's proven Boxer analogy though, if you're going to go long this, just be prepared. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Be prepared to wear it back to here. And boy, that looks like a, a nice area. Okay. Maybe even it's not. And this is the thing when you've got a strong market, the, the retracements may be, may be a lot less deep and maybe the 38 is all we get. Okay. But whatever happens, just be prepared. You know, the boxer analogy, be prepared to go the full 12 hard rounds. 
Dennis, and that's about as conclusive a, a weekly cloud break as you can get, you know, and we're just we're zooming right in here to, to take on these tops again. Even here looking at the daily cloud, like this sort of gave you the little bit of a, you know, the heads up that there could be a breakout coming because, mainly because of the, the, the strength and length of this down cloud, right? So when you've got a really well-formed cloud like this and price gets on the other side, it's usually a bullish signal. Okay, and we got that. Obviously, we've had an incredible explosion this week in Denison. And the impressive thing about this one is it's 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 had a pretty strong close to the end of the week as well. So, you know, is there more upside coming here? I mean, look, it's it's all relative, of course, but this is, you know, the, the RSI hasn't been up here very much, okay? You're talking about these sort of spikes, which, you know, this, this is kind of starting to look a bit the same uh, when the RSI got way up here. So this is probably a good example of what I'm saying, right? Because... Let, let, let's look at this movement uh, and let's let's look at this and compare it to what we're seeing at the moment. Now, now the scales here are, aren't the same. This run here was, you know, and we're talking about this one here, this was about 500%, right? This went from sort of 30 cents up to $1.80, okay, very, very quickly. Uh, so far, this, this rally off the low has been 70%. So <laughs> it's not a decent, it's not a bad run, right? But so what I'm saying is, okay, Let's just like sharpen this up so you can see the shapes. You know, look, th this is what this is what I'd see, right? So you know, we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, like that. Okay, so if you come over to the kind of the fractal, let's move it out of the way here. The same sort of thing. It'd be it's a bit harder to see because this is so outsized, but that sort of thing. Okay, so look, th this is the crux of what I'm getting at. What happened after this? it very quickly retreated 61.8% of the move, okay? And then it started chopping sideways. So I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen this time. This is what <laughs> this is what I keep trying to say. Boxer analogy, be prepared for the 12 hard rounds if it does happen. It may not, okay? And this, this might have a long way to go before it even thinks about retracing. But all I'm saying is when you go back through history and you see not just in uranium, and I know this is a bit different, but... A lot of other markets, when things go parabolic like this, expect the correction and just be prepared for it, okay? Expect the best, prepare for the worst. So we see where this tops out. We don't know yet, uh, but this is still just remains what, what we are looking for. So look, I think the thing is you can buy in here, okay? That, that's your business. You've got to do the research, do all the work, have a look into it. You can buy in here, but like I said, just be prepared for that to happen. Have it as part of your mental battle plan. Uh, CCJ, what a week. We talked about the break of the weekly cloud um, a few weeks ago. Uh, and, you know, we, we never really definitively got on the underside of this cloud, which is, you know, which was a great thing. Uh, so, you know, what it, to me it means, um, and, and what the good thing about this is, is that this, the strength of this trend, you know, the, the correction, the subsequent correction couldn't really force it down for very long. Uh, incredibly strong, you know, fantastic work here. So even on the weekly, we've now got a weekly TK cross. So that in itself uh, is very, very bullish. Uh, so I have talked about bearish gaps before. I mean, these are so far away now. It's it's difficult to even think that they're going to get filled anytime. So ne never impossible, okay? Always, it's never impossible, uh, but it seems pretty unlikely at this point that they're going to get filled. So I have stated, and it's true, that I'm just stating stats that most gaps in CCJ since 2020 have been filled, but there are a few that haven't been filled. And, you know, it looks like we've got a couple here that are going to remain unfilled. We've got another little one that's popped in here this week. Uh, you know, the, the chance of this getting filled, I guess, look a little bit better than, than some of these ones down low. But it, I think it's difficult to see, um, it, it's difficult to see, you know, CCJ now heading down that far. It, it could. Uh, but this... The thing about this rally as compared to the other ones is, yes, it's steep, but it's a little bit more sustained because there's been a little bit of digestion on the way. Even though these, you know, that's a that represents about a week's trading where it was flat, and this this the same thing. So this is this looks like classic Elliott one, two, three, four, five. That that's kind of how you would look at it. Uh, but we're, we're hot hotter than hell up here. When you look at the RSI, I mean, this is this is as, as hot as it gets. So, be just be aware of that. And just be, you know, prepared to do the hard ones. Now, look, I would look at this and think, um, you know, if I saw a correction even just back to here to test this structure, to test this stuff, and then it lines up with a 38, you know, th th that would look pretty compelling to me because I think 
what you're going to get here. It looks like you're going to get a one. Um, a, a, a pretty shallow two, I would have thought. And then, oh my God, that the, the third wave here could be anything. So I, I don't really want to say too much about that. I might do a deeper dive and a, a bigger overview of, of CCJ uh, as a proxy in future videos. Uh, but yeah, the, the potential here is, is, is obviously enormous. Uh, but you've got to keep your wits about you. Just make sure that you're not paying stupid valuation prices. If you can wait for this retrace, good. If this came come back there, even better. Uh, I'm not sure it can. It just feels too strong, but who knows? I, mean, I was wrong about it on the way up. Um, in terms of the time, I, I just didn't think that it could do this in the time that it did, uh, but it did. So I was wrong about that. I could be wrong about the fact that it it, it, it can't get back down here because it certainly could. Uh, but that would be how I'd be looking at CCJ. It's it's pretty clear to me the combination of the Fibonacci retracement there and the structure. Uh, that would be the area that I'd be having a look at. So I'll just finish off here with URA because this is really where the liquidity is. This is the one that um, you know is less likely to rip in straight line because those straight line rips often mean that there's no liquidity and there's just a wall of buyers and zero sellers. So this one, perhaps a little bit more, we, you know, you'll get the interaction of buyers and sellers. As my man, the Red Devil said, you know, there's a, a nice liquid and deep um, option market. You know, there's 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 plenty of um, volume to move around in this particular uh, stock or ETF. So this is what this is what I thought uh, was was a potential. And it's happened. It's just happened a lot quicker than what I thought. So, you know, I was looking for for this um, and we've sort of got that, uh, but just in a slightly different fashion uh, to what I was expecting. And we've just touched up here to make basically a new all time high. Now, you could say that was a double top. Mm, it, it remains to be seen. You know how you know it's a double top. The market does that. and You're like, oh, yeah, look, it was a double top. OK, so <laughs> I know. Um, but you know this the way this is shaping up uh, actually i will change this a little bit after my discussions with um you see last week we're not counting this as one two so we're what we're we just this changes it just a little bit um i think that looks like a running flat for a four so it's still we're still looking at possibly the five wave structure up here maybe that's a three there yeah, this looks better for a three because it's right up here in the in the high probability zone, a flat four. And look, these corrections in this rally have just been minuscule, right? They're, they're hardly any pullbacks. All right, so this this looks pretty good. Uh, like we said, that the, there's certainly um, a chance that this can go higher because what I would be looking for, if I just take, I'll take some of this out of the way because it's it's not quite relevant now. What I'd be looking for is, you know, this could certainly do this because I'd be looking for the RSI to then, as we lined up here, to then not make a, as, as high a high like that. That that would be a good sign. So that remains certainly a possibility. And remember what I was saying, uh, one of the ways you can map out uh, potential tops, when because we've got nothing to lean on here. We don't know where it's going, but that, right, we, if, you, if this was going to be a wave four, and maybe maybe we've got an extended third wave or something like that, but we, we, I don't know what's going to happen. I can just only deal with what I can see right now, right? And price leads Elliott, Elliott doesn't lead price. We lay out the roadmap and we just go, okay, well, look, um, 61.8, if this is the four, and maybe, you know, we have to change, maybe we've got to count this as the bottom of four somehow, but that general idea. Okay, now if I saw that, I'd be like, okay, well, look, I've got five waves with an extended fifth. Okay, and I've got divergence at the top here. So that, that would be the sign for me. So what I'm saying is certainly potential for this to go a little bit further. I don't know if it will, uh, but <laughs> it's red hot. Boxer analogy though, maybe this proves to be the top and then we get the correction. Just be prepared for that to happen, which isn't to say it's going to, just be prepared in your head if you're going to buy in at these levels. And, you know, look, generally I, I don't, think it's necessarily a problem to buy in at these levels um, because I, I, I think just from my studies of, of the long-term patterns and you know obviously the incredible potential that we're starting to see being realized here that you know the higher prices are, look a very good chance the, the only thing I'd say and why I keep saying this is if you buy in here today or Monday don't puke out there just don't I mean it, 
there's two ways you could do it, right? I mean, well, look, there's not, there's not more that there's a lot more than two ways you could do it. You could do it any way you want, but one potential way, if that suits you, is that you could buy some here, and you could then have a plan to buy more if it fell down here. I mean, there's nothing to say it does that either. I mean, we don't know. Anything could happen. So, um, but <laughs> you don't know this is going to happen. You don't know that this is going to happen. We just think from what we can see and everything we can read that this looks more likely than this. Sorry, pardon me, than, than this. All right, so you just got to lay a plan as to what you think looks most likely. And that's just where we use the tool of Elliot to help us. Now that, you know, that looks all right. I mean, I, I will leave this here, right? Because I, I think that, that that would not be a bad setup. But like I said, that the lack of divergence here leads me to think that I would not be surprised to see a little bit higher yet. So let's just see what happens. So um, that is it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll try to get some more guests uh, on in the next few weeks. Uh, certainly see if I can get uranium charts back on. I'm going to get onto the Red Devil, see if I can get him on. Uh, lots of exciting things coming up. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.